Well, hey, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here with me today again on the podcast. And we are in the middle of a three-part series. Last week was our 100th episode. Can't even believe that it's been 100 episodes. And at the end of the podcast today, I'm going to announce the winners of our contest where we had some pretty amazing giveaways. And uh, I'll have the answers or the winners for you in the outro. So you got to listen to the podcast. No fair skipping ahead because this is some good stuff today. So part two of this series is how to create a sticky practice. So last week during the hundredth episode, we talked about creating a video library and I know I've had some feedback from y'all like, I don't like video. I don't think I look good on video. Listen, any skill you learn is always hard the first time. That's a fact. When you went to chiropractic school or acupuncture school, or you had to start working out, whatever you're learning, when you learn how to drive for Pete's sakes, it's kind of hard and overwhelming at first. Just do it. Just get in, start doing it and just give yourself permission to mess it up because that's what's going to happen. That's in part what I talked about, about being so vulnerable. Like we have to be able to be human and go, oops, said something wrong. Or, you know, I made a mistake. I meant to say. It's just what makes you human. And that's what people love about you. And that's what they love about that. Just that you're transparent that way. So we talked about how to create that video library that allows them to have a little sneak peek of you for free on YouTube, but then holding some of those videos back and creating a membership. That's just one way that you can do it. If you don't want to do a membership that supports your niche might be a membership on like recipes and meal plans. That's really a popular one because it's so easy to do. Um, exercises or stretching or meditation or newborn care or postnatal care or whatever you pick your thing, whatever lights you up, you can do that as membership. But some practitioners just say, I just want to get these short little snippets of videos out on YouTube, you know, as free content, which is great too. So however you want to do it, just Choose what feels easy and light to you. Whatever feels easy and light. That's what I want you to do. Don't do it if it feels like work. You may want to cut your teeth and just do some of the easy, light, free videos on YouTube to start. And that's okay too. All right. So be courageous, be brave, take a risk and just do it. Just do it. All right. Now we're going to dive into part two. The second thing that you can do that creates a really, really sticky practice is creating what I call resources that walk and talk. So these are your resources that will are, they're able to get legs and they can be shared things that someone is going to be like, oh my gosh, can you believe what I got from, you know, my practitioner, Dr. So-and-so or my acupuncturist, my health coach or nutritionist, or my nurse practitioner, whatever it is. What are resources that you can create that walk and talk? So here's what I mean. And well, before I tell you that, I'll tell you what my experience was. So many years ago, when I had a brick and mortar practice in Northern California, I had a waitlist practice. It was booming and huge and just tons of activity. We always joked that we literally would run like Marcy, who is my front desk person, uh, office manager, she would literally, I watched her so many times get up. She would run from the front desk back to the supplement room to get something, to get it to a patient because there was so much happening. We were so busy and it was great. And I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and so when, when that was all happening, this is back in the era before we had, you know, the resources online that we have now. But when at that time I had a new patient packet that I gave everyone and it was a branded folder. So I went to somewhere like Vistaprint and just had a folder. He just opens up and there's a pocket on either side on the left and the right little place for a business card, super simple. They weren't really expensive and I got good quality. You know, I wanted them like glossy at the time and they had my logo on the front and my name. It just said, welcome to restoration health and loved it. It was great. So inside though, inside those folders on the inside, I had some information that I wanted them to have. And they, ha I had welcome, you know, thing, what they could expect, um, our office policies, you know, about missed appointments and supplements and lab tests and all the things you would put in an office policy. I had a sheet that said what my commitment to them was. And then at the bottom, what I wanted their commitment to themselves to be. And I, I made that, I listened, here's what I'm committing to you, but here's what I'm asking you to commit to yourself. 
And so that kind of put us on the same page. I put that in there. And I think all of that was like, wah, wah, wah in the background. But the thing that we put in there that everybody loved, and we had so many comments and don't laugh because this is just how we did it then because it's the only way we knew to do it. But we typed up our favorite recipes. And that was, we did a lot of like dehydrated foods, like some dehydrated mushrooms and dehydrated kale. And before it was kind of a thing or it was just kind of becoming a thing. And so we had all of these recipes all typed up and we laminated them. I had a laminating machine in my office, bought the laminator sheets. We would laminate them and then we cut them and then we hole punch in the corner. I know it sounds so archaic, but I'm telling you, this is what we did. And then we got the little one, the little um, rings, you know, that you would like a key ring kind of, except the little, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, they, they clip together and we would put like 15 recipes of these laminated recipes on one of these little one inch rings and their recipes stuck inside the folder. I cannot tell you how many people said, oh my gosh, I love those recipes. I've made all of them. Do you have a second set? And I thought, oh. No, I don't have a second set. So maybe I ought to make a second set. So then we made a second set and the second set had a little different color on it and it was looked a little different. So they knew the difference between the two. The recipes were a hit. And at the time it was so manual, it was such manual labor, like laminating and cutting and then punching the hole and then putting them on the ring and making sure we didn't have duplicate recipes on one ring. And it was a bit manual, but we loved it. We actually really enjoyed that. And the patients loved it. So now what we created was this durable resource, this folder that had all of the paperwork in it, but it had these recipes in it. And I told them, I want you to bring this folder with you to every appointment because I knew that I was going to have other things to give them. I was going to have other resources to give them. And I wanted them to have one place where everything lived. Do you see how I kind of started to train them, train the behavior that I wanted by giving them the thing rather than sending them out like the folder, rather than sending them off saying, okay, go home, get a file folder, put all your things in and then bring your file folder. No, 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 no. I made it super, super easy. So now today, fast forward to today, this is how I would do it different. I would still do the folder. In fact, I still do the folder in my brick and mortar practice. I still do something similar to that with my virtual patients, but not to the same degree. Cause there's just something about having a, a folder in your hand. So with the folder in hand, it has all the things in it, like all the papers and all the, you know, whatever you need to put in there, welcome to your clinic letter or your office policies, those are things, commitment to you, your commitment to them, their commitment to themselves. Those are all great things to put in there. But now this is the other things that I would put in there. Number one, I would put a recommended reading list. I would give that at every single appointment. I don't do that in my brick and mortar practice in Seattle because it's not appropriate for what we do here. But in a brick and wellness brick and mortar, patients want to learn more. They want to know, what do you think about here's here? What do you think about, you know, the paleo diet versus a keto, or what do you think about uh, cholesterol? Or what do you think about water or salt or iodine? All those things are things they're looking for you to you for those answers. So put together a recommended reading list. So as I was preparing for this episode, I thought, okay, if I was going to do this, what would I want on my list for my patients? Now I don't, I, I, I don't have a need for this, but you do, you do. If I had a brick and mortar or a virtual practice where I was really busy seeing people, I'm not that busy. I have very select about who I, I work with and this, so this isn't relevant to me, but I really want you to know this is key. This resource I've actually made this resource for you. I'm going to read to you the books that I put on the resource. If it was me and I was going to create one, this is what I would do. So the first one that I put on there is The Body's Many Cries for Water. I love that book. It's all about how water is so, so important. Then I have The Basics of Human Health by Mary Frost. I love that book. It's such a good one for patients. Great Cholesterol Con by Johnny Bowden. Um, that's our, that's a great cholesterol myth by Johnny Bowden. And then there's the great cholesterol con by Malcolm Kendrick. The first one has to do with statins and cholesterol and the whole myth behind all of that. And then the second one, the great cholesterol con that one has more to do with stress and sugar as it has to do with arterial, uh, disease, cardiovascular disease. 
Then um, I love the 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth by Johnny Bowden again. That one's just such a good one for patients. They can read it and they go, okay, this is a healthy food. I'm going to eat this food. It's all, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, David Brownstein's book on salt, your way to health, which is the benefits of salt. Um, there's also a book by Wendy Hayden called the Vegas nerve gut brain connection. And I really love this book. Um, Undoctored by William Davis, wheat belly by William Davis, grain brain by David Perlmutter. Uh, nutrition and physical degeneration by Weston A. Price. That is a home run all the time. And then there's another one by him that I like is called the pathology of dental infections. And he goes into what really what's happening in the mouth. And that's such a source of hidden infections for many, many patients. So I like that one. Nourishing traditions by Sally Fallon definitely made the list. And then last but not least is the eat fat, lose fat by Sally Fallon and Mary Enig, because patients have so much trouble getting their head around that fat doesn't make you fat. I always say fat doesn't make you fat, Oreos make you fat. Not fat, it's Oreos. If I cut open your leg and squeeze out the fat, what would come out would be Oreos and bread and brownies. Uh, avocado would not come out and olive oil would not come out. Coconut oil would not come out and bacon would not come out. So that I make a joke about it. Obviously I'm not gonna cut anyone's leg open, but you get my point. So on this list of resources, I really tried to think like, what would be the things that I would want them to have? So my friend, what we've done is we've created this resource for you. It's as a PD, excuse me, as a word doc, that's just super basic. It doesn't have any kind of great formatting or anything like that on it. It's just very basic and it's free for you in the show notes. You can go to the show notes and download this free resource. Then you can also grab it as a Canva doc. So a Canva document. So Canva is a graphic design, super easy to use. You can add that to your Canva account if you're Canva friendly. And uh, then you can just customize it to your heart's content, change your colors, put your branding on there, et cetera. Otherwise you can use the Word doc and just keep it super simple. Put your logo, your contact info at the bottom and you can customize that. So we've given it to you in two forms. One as a Canva document that you can add to your Canva account. And the other one is just a plain old Word document. But I've put all of these on there and you can take some off if you want. Like if you don't like the book, great. Take it off, put your own book on there, but make sure that you put links on there too, where they can find them online, like at Amazon or wherever you want to link to. So there you go. That is my friend, a walking and talking resource because patients will share that. And you might even put an extra copy in there with a little sticky note on top that says, share this with your, with a friend. And it has your information on the bottom. Like these are the resources that people want to share. Oh my gosh, you see, my doctor told me I should be reading these books. So walking and talking resources that we want to share. Now, the second thing is give them DIY at home tests, assessments, or questionnaires. So I'm a big one for giving them homework. I like to give some of them homework because they start to take more ownership of what's happening with their health. So it could be as easy as having them do a food or a symptom log. So tracking their food and then correlating that with their symptoms. So you can create that document, just a word document, give it to them, print it out or PDF, have them fill it out. But I like to correlate the diet with the symptoms. So what are you eating and how are you feeling? So note how they're feeling throughout the day and also what they're eating, because you'll start to see correlations with foods that, that may be causing problems. You could send home a bathroom chart with the Bristol scale that lets them kind of give you a you know, rating of the Bristol scale every time they have a bowel movement, right? You can have them go do that. People, they just, they do, they like this stuff. Uh, personal body care inventory, just give them an inventory sheet and have them write down every single body care item that goes on their skin, on their face, anything that touches the skin should go on this image, just an inventory list. Another one is uh, an inventory of cleaning products. That's another one that people often underestimate or don't realize the toxicity of the products that they have in their home. So things that they're cleaning the bathroom with, what they're using for dishes and sink and laundry soap and um, you know dishwasher soap, all that stuff. Soap, bar soap, you know, shampoos, all those things. So cleaning personal care products. And then there's some great questionnaires out there, like the digestive questionnaire, the toxicity questionnaire, the system survey, the adrenal questionnaire, thyroid questionnaire. 
you've got lots of those that you can give. And again, people really like to share them. You know, they like to say, I, I took this test. Like I took the test and I got a score. It was 83. You take it. What's yours? They give it to your husband or your child or a neighbor. So questionnaires are a great thing to do. pH test strips. If pH, you know, floats your boat and you like doing that, you can have them do like test their pH and have them log that down. And on that note, you can do like basal body temperature testing. If you're working with women, I just assigned someone that the other day, you can have them do the baking soda reflux test and see how that works out for them or the calcium cuff test or the zinc taste test. So I'm just throwing ideas out for you, but there are so many things that you can give them as homework and they, people love to share like, oh my gosh, I've got this thing I have to do. Check it out. And then they talk to their friends about it. These are the walking and talking resources. So number one is a recommended reading list. Number two are any kind of DIY at home type homework. And then number three, I like to curate a list of YouTube videos and the YouTube videos. I'm back there because everybody loves videos. We know videos are very sticky. And so videos are a great way for you to curate what you love on YouTube and share it with them. So much like the Canva resources or the word doc that we created with the reading list, you can create a YouTube list. These are the videos. So it could be cooking videos. Maybe you love to cook and you've done your own videos. That's great too. You can put your own in there, but maybe there's a certain person that you think that they would really benefit from looking, watching this person cook and prepare their paleo meals. Maybe it's about how to make their own candles or how to exercise outdoors or swimming things or, you know, swimming exercises, or maybe put in something funny, like, you know, a funny cat video or something. I don't know, you know, find something to put on the list that makes them smile, but also something that gives them value. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's something that's healing with sound or tuning forks or crystal bowls or how to make your own DIY cleaning products, but you can find so many things on YouTube that you can share with your patients. And again, these are shareable. These are things that you're providing for them in that new patient packet or at your subsequent visits that you're instructing them to put in their new patient packet, right? So we want to create these resources that are walking and talking resources. It's how you create a sticky practice. So again, if you have videos that you have on YouTube, link your own videos in this resource, but just make sure that there are things that you can hundred percent put your, you know, stamp of approval on and then check them every now and again, just to make sure the links work and that kind of thing. All right. Now I know three things. Number one, a, a recommended reading. Number two, uh, create and curate your own like DIY at home resources and homework. And then number three is this YouTube resource. So they can go get value elsewhere. Don't, don't feel like, you know, Oh, well, if I send them somewhere else, they're going to go there and they're not going to want to work with me. That is not the case. Not at all. They will want to work with you. I promise they will find more value because you are saying, I'm the authority and I trust these other people, the cooking video people or these books. I trust them. I endorse them is basically what you're saying. And that really does give you credibility. I know it seems a little backwards, but it really does work like that. So before we wrap up a few notes, number one, don't give them all the homework all at one time, maybe just one thing. So they come in for an appointment, you give them one thing. Or maybe you send something out a couple of weeks later and say, Hey, I was thinking about you. I think I'd like for you to, before you come in for your next appointment, would you do an inventory of your personal care products, hair care, body care, et cetera, skin care, all the things that need to, that you're putting on your skin. You may want to do that in between, but just don't give them all of them at one time. And then make sure in that new patient packet, that folder that you have all of their, like what I call onboarding information and resources. So just make sure that that's all in there too. Uh, and then make sure that your practice name and number and website are on everything. You want to make sure everything is branded because that's the point. We want to create a sticky practice. Sticky means that the patient is going to stay because you're providing so much love and care for them. You're making them feel like they're part of the family, but you're also creating resources that are shareable. In other words, they're going to walk. They're going to go somewhere else. They're going to share. Somebody is going to say, oh my gosh, you have to check this resource out. And you want to encourage that, like encourage them. Say, listen, you can feel free to give this. Do you want me to give you an extra copy? You can give someone you want to share this with because it's such a great tool like the system survey or the digestive questionnaire. Oh my gosh, people will fill that out all day long. 
And so you may just ask them, hey, would you like an extra copy of this? Do you have someone that you'd like to share it with? I'm happy to provide it for you. So there you go. Those are my tips. And listen, if you are not sure where to start, or you're feeling overwhelmed, you can get input from your spouse, from your staff. But if you're really stuck, you can always reach out to me and schedule a free 15 minute call with me. I am more than happy to give you ideas all day long about what you can do, but tell me where you're stuck. If you don't have someone that can kind of help you give you some direction or stimulate some ideas about what you can do to create these sticky resources, then just schedule a call with me. You go to rondanelson.com forward slash strategy. That's how you can get on my calendar.